Our class in this lesson, we're going to take a look at section 6.3, uh, the rational numbers. We talked about the first three number sets already in the last lesson, natural, whole, and integers. And now we're going to add almost everything in between, not everything, but almost everything in between, and those are rational numbers. And rational numbers are numbers that can be represented as a fraction whose equivalent decimal either repeats forever or it terminates. And terminates means ends, like 1.5. But uh, repeats forever is like 1.3333, maybe put a line over it. Okay, so we can talk about rational numbers. Rational numbers are fractions, generally, or at least they can be represented as fractions. And so we talk about equality of fractions if, uh, when you've got your two fractions happening, they are true, they are equal, if and only if AD, in other words, if I cross multiply A times D, and if that's equal to B times C. So let's take a look here. If I have these fractions on the left here, if I multiply them, uh, cross multiply, maybe you've heard of it, of it that way. So if I multiply 8 times 12, is that the same as 3 times 32? And all you have to do is take a calculator out and see if that is actually true. And so here we got 8 times 12 gives us 96. And 3 times 32 is going to also give us 96. Okay, so if this is true, these fractions are equivalent. And what that means is I could take the left side or the right side and reduce it, and it would actually be 3 eighths. So 12 30 seconds is 3 eighths. So over here on the right, if I take a look at 116 and 35, if I multiply them together, 35 times 116, is that equal to 39 times 108? Okay, so 39 times 108 gives me 4,212, and 35 times 116 does not give me that. It gives me 4,060. So these fractions are close, but they are not actually equivalent. And so th same thing over here, I take my 1,892, multiply by 165, and see if that's equal to 220 times my 1,419. And if I multiply those, 1, 8, 1, 9, or sorry, looking at the wrong one, 1, 8, 9, 2, and multiply that by my 165, you're going to get 312,180. And here we get 220 times it by 1419, and I get the exact same fraction. So the left side is actually equal to the right side. It's a fraction of that number. Here we go. So canceling common factors. So our rule is that if I have A times C divided by B times C, the resulting fraction just needs to be A times B. In other words, if I have uh, 5 times 2, also known as 10, over, uh, let's say, 7 times 2, which is 14. If I have 10 over 14, I could have rewritten it this way, and the 2s would cancel, and I'd be left with 5 over 7. So the rule is here is that 5 over 7 is really being multiplied by 2 over 2. 2 over 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it's really 5 over 7 times 1. And that's why we have this rule that says that if you have the C, a constant, a common number, you can divide them, and your resulting fraction is the reduced fraction, or at least is simplified. There. Okay, so here we go. If I break 48 up into its parts, it can be broken up into, they both have a 4 in common, 48 and 72 both have a 4 in common. If I divide them both by 4, I would get 12 times 4 and 18 times 4. Then looking at what's left over, I can keep going. I could have divided by a larger common factor. And here, I can see that because 6 goes into both of these two numbers. And so I can reduce and divide them both by 6. So at the beginning, I could have divided 48 and 72 by 24 and done it in one step. But sometimes we don't always see it the biggest common factor at the first time through. So we just keep dividing and simplifying at the subset. And so we've got 2 thirds is our final uh, reduced fraction here. And again, the point is not to 
teach us again how to reduce fractions. The point is to understand the rule is that the reason why is because I'm pulling out a 1. And when I'm pulling out 4 divided by 4, I'm seeing there's a 1 here. And so this is all that's left over. Pulling out some 6s, that's a 1. So the resulting fraction is your least common denominator. Okay, so looking at uh, this larger amount was saying that I've got 1848 and 2112. This is referencing back to uh, often the question is, well, what do I divide by? And since we have our rules of 1 to 10 of what, what, what uh, rule to use or what number to use, we can quickly see that these last two numbers are both divisible by 4, and so that's a good place to start. So you can divide them both by 4, and you would get these. You would cancel your 4s, get those numbers. And then we keep working through our rules to see that uh, these are both divisible by 6. If I add the sum of the terms, they're divisible by 2 and 3. I could have done 3, but it's divisible by 2 and 3, so 6 works. And that gives me to reduce this thing further faster. And here I've got the 6 canceling out, 77 over 88. And here that will reduce by 11, and I'll be left with 7 over 8. So my reduced fraction at the very end is 7 eighths. Okay, now here is a three-way little principle, and so what I often, often see students do is they'll take a problem like this one, where it's uh, y plus x plus 5 over y plus 5, and they'll get excited and see the 5s and think that the principle works here, and I can just cross those out, and I get x over 5. Well, if I actually put some numbers in there, like right here, if I say that this was uh, 2 plus 5 over 3 plus 5, and then you get, you get canceling on your fives, and you say, well, the result is 2 thirds. Well, that's not actually what the answer would have been. If you add the top, you would have got 7. If you added the bottom, you would have got 8. And 7 eighths doesn't reduce to 2 thirds, so you cannot cancel this way. And I see it happen all the time, especially if it was like x over, or x plus 2 over x plus 3. I have students cancel this all the time. Well, it doesn't work. And it, it just can't, you can't cancel that way. Because if I put a, if I put a 1 in for x, if I replaced 1 for x, it would have been 1 plus 2 over 1 plus 3. And so that would have resulted in 3 over 4, which is not 2 thirds. It's not always 2 thirds. It depends on what the x is. Okay, so we can't cancel our terms that way. It has to be a multiple. It has to be um, what we were just showing a moment ago, where, uh, where it was something like uh, 3 times 5 over 4 times 5. And then I can see, OK, because I'm multiplying, I'm multiplying by 1, and timesing by 1 doesn't change anything. So here's adding and subtracting rational numbers. If we want to add and subtract, um, we need to have common denominators. And so that's nothing new for us. But uh, let's take a look here. Notice here, this says that I can add them when I'm multiplying b times d. This is just talking about common denominators. Same thing for subtraction. So we're going to be leading into common denominators here. And uh, your textbook at this point talks about actually just straight up making it simple and multiplying. And you can always multiply um, the way that that rule just said and multiply top and bottom over here by the 8, and then multiply top and bottom over here by the 18, and then your resulting answer will be just 8 times 11 minus 3 times 18 over 8 times 18. And this will always work. Uh, the reason why we didn't learn it this way is because then at the end we're going to have to go through a long process of simplifying at the end. Uh, whereas it would be a little bit nicer to figure out what is the least common multiple of 18 and 8, which we've practiced earlier, and so that would get us a little bit quicker answer. Okay, so. Uh, I prefer that method is to actually find the least common multiple, but this is always the fast, maybe maybe the fastest way to jump at the answer is just to multiply these, uh, this denominator by the top and bottom on the left, and this denominator here by the top and bottom on the right, and then you can keep going and not have to pause and think through well, what would be my least common uh, multiple. But as we've learned earlier uh, in our lessons this week, is that uh, the 18 can be broken up into its a prime fart prime parts, and we've got divide by 2, and we get 9, 3, and 3, and then take the 8 and do the same thing. 8 goes into 2 and 4, and then 2 and 2, and so my least common multiple would be, I need the greatest amount of 3s, which is 2 of them, so 3 times 3, and the greatest amount of 2s, which is 3 of them, so times 3, or sorry, 2 times 2 times 2, 
and then that would give me my least common multiple between 8 and 18. So if I do 2, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times 9, my least common denominator is going to be 72. And 8 times 18 is going to give me 144. So 72 is a little bit smaller than uh, this 144 that I'd be getting on the way that the, uh, the notes just said to do that a moment ago in the way their textbook is recommending. So 72 is actually reduced of 144, so you don't have to go quite as far. It's not that much better, but it's a little bit better. And so the question is just how to get the 18 to become the 72 and the 8 to become the 72 to do your common denominators. So if I take 72 and divide it by 8, that gives me 9. So here I could multiply by 9 instead of by 18. And over here I could multiply by 4, and that would give me 72. And so it's a little bit nicer multiplication, and, and your answer will be a little bit nicer at the end. But still, this is the tried and true method that will always work, and you always get you the right answer to finish. So I'm going to... I'm going to assume that we can do our least common denominator and assume that we can multiply by the 4. I'm going to follow through with what I've got written here and do my 8 times 11 and subtract my 3 times my 18. And that's 54. And so I take my 88 minus my 54 and I should get 34 over 144. And as you can see, at the very end, I have to reduce, which I wouldn't have had to reduce here but obviously it's not that hard to just go ahead and reduce this. And so if I divide this by 2, I'm going to get 17 over 72. And this is my final answer because 17 is prime. So this method, very quick, very easy. Uh, this method gives you your least common denominator, the way that we practice a lot uh, more in elementary school. But um, this is, either method works. This method's pretty quick. And I often will run here when I can't think of on the top of my head what the least common denominator, or least common multiple of eight, like numbers at 18 and 8. I mean, who thinks about that number 72? This will always get you there, but usually we take a look at numbers like 6 and 4, and we can think more quickly that they go up to 12, and then that helps us um, on this problem to not have to do the prime factorization like I was just doing. So it's up to you whether or not you want to do prime factorization or do the quick multiplying. So like I say, I could quick multiply this top and bottom by 4 and this top and bottom by 6 and, and just get moving very quickly. Or I can think through, all right, well, what can multiply the 6 to make it a, tw a 12 and the 4 to make it a 12 and work on it that way. So whichever way you prefer to work on these uh, fractions. Okay? So multiplying fractions, utilizing reduction, is that uh, we multiply fractions straight across, but the reason why I say utilizing reduction is because often the case is going to happen where you've got something like A over C times C over D, and then you're going to actually be able to cancel, and then the final answer is going to be A over D. Okay, so the B here is different, but the point is you multiply straight across. So you straight across here, straight across here, and these will be your results. But I want us to be paying attention for uh, that you can cross cancel, cancel diagonally. And you're going to see a lot of that in these problems I'm bringing up here. For example, on A, uh, rather than multiply 4 times 3 and get 12 and 3 times 15, I want to just go ahead and cancel and then multiply straight across. 4 times, this is a 1 now, and that's going to give me 4. And then 1 times 15, it's going to give me 15, and then I'm done. I don't have to reduce. Same thing here. I want to look at these, uh, the 10 and the 25, I want to reduce by 5. This reduces to a 5, and this reduces to a 5 if I cancel a 5 out of each one of them. In other words, I'm dividing each of them by 5. I said this one's 5, it's 2, sorry. 10 turns into a 2. Because 10 divided by 5 is 2, 25 divided by 5 is 5. And then looking this way, I got 18 and 81. I want to divide the 81 by 9 and get 9. I want to divide the 18 by 9 and get 2. So now all that I'm left over with is 2 times 2 is 4, and 5 times 9 is 45. And that way my final answer is reduced right away at the end. I don't have to do any reduction. But if I didn't want to do it that way, if I don't understand, it's perfectly acceptable to say 18 times 10 is 180. And then whatever 25 times 81 is goes on the bottom, and then reduced, and you'll get 4 over 45. Okay? 
Same, same thing here. It's just written a little bit differently. We've got parentheses. Uh, the point is that we've got a negative times a positive. My final answer is going to be negative. Then I reduce. The 4 can be reduced into the 12. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then here the 5 and the 9 can't cancel. You can't cancel the 9 and the 3. You're supposed to multiply the 9 and the 3 to get 27. Divided by 1 times 5 is 5. Your final result is negative 27 over 5. Okay, and one of the biggest confusing things for students is dividing by a fraction. And here uh, I have a catchphrase that I say often, and that's flip and multiply. What you're doing is you're taking the denominator and you're flipping it up like this, where you're multiplying by what's called the reciprocal. And you notice the D is now on top and the C is on the bottom. So I'm flipping it, that's why I do a little squiggle there, so that it flips and multiplies. So here in this case, I've got. Uh, I'm 25 twelfths, and then there's the big division here happening of the fraction divided by the other fraction, where I want to take 25 over 12, and I want to flip and multiply the, just the denominator. Never, ever, ever flip the top. The top stays exactly the way that it is. And then our denominator flips up to be 3 over 10. Then I multiply straight across, or across cancel first in this case, and what I can do is say 3 goes into 3 once, it goes into 12 four times, 5 goes into 25 five times, 5 goes into 10 twice, and then multiply straight across and get 5 over 8 will be my reduced answer. And then here we can do the same thing with a negative. I can take this up and flip and multiply. And so I've got negative 11 over 6 stays the same. You never change that part. The denominator multiplies. Uh, it flips and multiplies to be 9 over 7. And then I can cross cancel the 6 and the 9. I can reduce a 3 from both of them. And so this will turn into 2 and 3. And this gives me negative 33 and then over 14. All right. Now we've got uh, to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. Now this is a concept that it's good for understanding of what the number means, but very often in algebra, it's perfectly acceptable to leave our answer improper. So students coming up uh, from elementary school all the way up to high school, we're so frustrated because we, uh, we've been told from our elementary school teachers that this is unacceptable. We can't leave it. It's improper. That improper means wrong. Improper doesn't mean wrong. This is perfectly acceptable as an algebra. Algebra and beyond, uh, through higher math, this is a very acceptable. We're happy with this answer. Um, but we need to understand it utilizing a mixed number because we understand how many whole numbers we have, how, what the, how big the whole number part is, and then it leads us into what the, the fraction decimal portion is and separating those two concepts. So what, we've, what we do is we take our 123 and divide it by 8. And then we actually do the division here. Um, rather than just do it, I'm going to divide on the calculator. But uh, our 123 divided by 8 is going to give us 15. And then if I multiply 15 times 8, is 120. So that means my remainder is going to be 3. The 3 is what gives us our improper fraction part. So 15 is the whole number portion. And then we're saying we have 3 left over that was divided by, and that needs to be divided by 8 yet, but we can't. So what we're doing is we're saying this represents 15 whole numbers and then 3 eighths left over. And so again, the key is that this is not wrong. The key is that we just need to understand it using a whole number and a fraction part, mixed number, mixed between whole and fraction portion. Same thing here with the 45 over 6. We take our 45, divide it by our 6, and 45 divided by 6 is going to give us 7. And 7 times, 40, or seven times uh, 6 is going to give us 42, which means that our remainder portion is 3. And so here we've got 7 is how many whole times 6 goes into 45. And the leftover part, there's 3 6 In other words, 1 half. So 7 and 1 half left over. So it goes in 7 and a half times. Okay. And so... Back, going back, we've got uh, 5 and 2 sevenths. We want to understand that this can be written as an improper fraction. And your job is to just start at the 7. You always start at the base. 
you multiply it by the whole number portion, because basically five, 7 went into something 5 times, so we want to know what that number is. So 7 times 5 is 30, and then we add the 2 leftover remainder portion, and then it was all being divided by 7. So the answer is 32 over 7. This is the improper fraction way of writing 5 and 2 sevenths. Same thing here, 11 is the base, so we divided something originally by 11. Now we're, we're finding that it went in evenly 8 times into whatever that thing, so that would have given us 88, 8 divided by 11 would have given us this 8. And then an extra 3 for a remainder gives us our final answer over 11, which is going to be 91 over 11. So this was what the improper fraction was. That would have given us this mixed number. Okay. Um, writing something in decimal form, we use utilize long division. So we've got 5 uh, divided by 8. You have to put your decimal point, put our 0. We always carry our decimal point straight up. So the question is really how many times does 8 go into 50? And it should go in uh, 6 times because it goes into 48. And then we have a leftover portion of 2. And so the key here is you just keep adding zeros, bringing zeros down, and then seeing how many times it goes in. It goes in twice to give you 16. And then we get a 4. And then we bring in a 0. And then we're going to go ahead and bring the 0 down. And it goes into 45 times. So this is our quick way to turn it into a decimal. And of course, you can do these on your calculator and get the same exact result. And I'm going to go ahead and trust that you can use your calculator. I'm going to skip a B. I'm actually, I'm going to skip C too, but I'm just going to talk about it for a second. And that's just to remind us that when we do the long division here on C and divide by uh, 11, you're going to see that it goes into 7, 3, 8, and then all of a sudden it's going to, you're going to keep doing zeros and it's going to repeat here where you see the 8, 20 show up again. And then all of a sudden the whole division process over, goes over and over and over again. And so what you'll see is that we've got uh, three set. 738 and then 738 and then it'll keep doing 738 and repeating and repeating and repeating forever, which is part of what happens with rational numbers. So you can use your calculator on these and just throw them in for division, but uh, I showed you the first example of again why it works again. Here we've got uh, converting a decimal into a fraction. Now this is a little bit more complicated and it may not be something that your calculator will do for you. So let's take a look. Um, what you want to do is count and remember that if I go a zero here, this is our tenths. If we have another zero, this is our hundredths. I'm just going to write it that way. If we have a zero here, this is our thousandths. And then ten thousandths. Notice each time this is ten hundred. Each time you're getting an extra zero place. These, depending on how far you are over, this is how many uh, zeros you want to divide by with your 10. So it's a 1 with this many zeros is what you need to divide by. So let me explain that a little more clearly on practice here. So I've got 0.5. This is, I need to divide it by a 1 with this many zeros underneath it to get my number, my decimal, back into a fraction. In other words, this is going to turn into 5. Here, drop, just drop the decimal. 5 over 10, which is 1 half. 1 half will give me 0.5. Same thing here. Drop the decimal part, put a 1 there, and then two zeros because there's two places. And my fraction here is 28 over 100, which if I divide that by 2 is going to be 14 over 50. Divide by 2 again, and I get 7 over 25. 7 25ths, if you divide it on your calculator, will give you 0.28. Same thing down here. If I take... Um, Oops, sorry. Yeah, just leave it. Uh, if I scribble this out and put a 1 and then three zeros, this is going to give me 124 over 1,000. If you take that on your calculator and divide it, of course, you're going to get 0.124. But uh, if I reduce here, you can divide by 2 for sure. And that's going to give me, um, what is that going to give me? 62 over 500. Then I can divide by 2 again and get uh, 31 over 250. So 31 over 250 is going to give me my 120 or 0.124. So this is a this is how you convert numbers back to uh, decimals or decimals back to fractions. Now the hard part is when you get into a repeater, it doesn't quite work as well. 
because uh, I can't, because this actually continues and repeats to 363636 uh, on forever. And so here's our, our process. It's to, you have to actually set up an algebra equation a little bit, and you have to call x, you can call it n or p or whatever, is equal to 0.36. And then what we want to do is, is take and multiply 100 times x. Or in this case, in the same way it was, there's two zeros, so if this was, if it was just 0.3 with a line over it, then I would just be multiplying by 10. So it's, it's however far, if I put a 1 here and then zeros, however far until the repeating happens, so like the repeating starts right here, wherever that is, that's the number you're multiplying by here in this location. Okay, so if I do that, and then if I go ahead and subtract 1x, so let me work this out a little bit here. So I multiplied this guy by 100, and that gives me this, okay? And on the left-hand side, we multiplied x by 100, so that gives me 100 x's. What you do is you go back through and you subtract 1x from both sides, and what that's going to leave you is 99 x's is equal to uh, 36 is going to be subtracted by 0.36, so this part goes away. The repeating decimal, just I just killed it. I just caused it to go away. So that gives me 36 to disappear. And then if I come down here and actually solve for x, divide both sides by 99, I get x equals 36 over 99. Take your calculator and do 36 divided by 99. Guess what you get? 0.36 repeating forever. And then if you actually reduce this, uh, you can divide the top and bottom by, well, 3 for sure. Let's see, 36, 36 divided by 3 gives us 12. And then 99 divided by 3 gives us 33. And that's as far as I can reduce it. So 12 divided by 33 gives us this reduced fraction for what 0.36 is repeating forever. Oops, sorry, I had one more example here. So let's try, um, I guess I left it all there as a, uh, sorry, that was supposed to get worked out here. So let's go ahead and take a point, point 0.634, and I'll actually work it out. So 0.364 is what we're going to work on, 0.634. So the process is to realize if I had a 1 with 1, 2, 3 zeros, again, this doesn't work for me just to divide it this way because this actually is repeating. So it's not just once, it actually happens again, uh, 6, 3, 4, 6, 3, 4, and, and so on. So the point here is that doesn't work. I can't just divide and call it good. It's not just 634 over 1,000. So what I have to do is I have to say uh, x is equal to 0.634. And then what I want to do is multiply it by this 1,000. Rather than divide, I actually multiply. So I'm going to say that uh, 1,000 x's is equal to 634, and then it would be, because this repeats, 634 again, would be 0.634 with a line over it, okay? And then what I do is I subtract 1x, and the 1x was this guy right here. So I'm subtracting 0.634 with a line over it. And then the way that the algebra works is that this cancels out the repeating portion, and the leftover amount is 999 equals 634 uh, x. Sorry, lost my x there. So if I divide by 999, I end up with my actual answer of my fraction, not reduced, of course, of 634 over 999. If I take my calculator and divide 634 by 999, I'm going to get my repeating decimal of 630, or sorry, 0.634 forever. And of course, this reduces, but not important to do that here. Okay. So I think that's the end of this lesson. So if you have any questions, please email me through the Ask My Instructor feature of the lab.